Hey, Dr. Wilson here. I'm a molecular and structural biologist, and I'm back to debunk some more COVID-19 misinformation. And this week, we're going to be covering something that might be a repeat of hydroxychloroquine, a drug called ivermectin. And this doctor who testified in front of Congress thinks that it's a wonder drug. Is there any truth to what he says? Is ivermectin effective in treating COVID-19? Well, in order to find out, let's listen to what he has to say and then let's check the data. I want to start out by saying that I'm not speaking as an individual. I'm speaking on behalf of the organization that I'm a part of. We are a group of some of the most highly published physicians in the world. This might sound harsh, but I don't care. I don't care what kind of degree you have. I don't care what kind of credibility you have. All that matters is the evidence. Does that support what he has to say? Yes or no? And that's all I'm going to focus on. I am severely troubled by the fact that the NIH, the FDA, and the CDC, I do not know of any task force that was assigned or compiled to review repurposed drugs in an attempt to treat this disease. Everything has been about novel and or expensive pharmaceutically engineered drugs, things like tocilizumab and rendesivir and monoclonal antibodies and vaccines. Well, yes, there has been a landmark effort to develop a safe and effective SARS-CoV-2 vaccine with more money and resources being dedicated to making that happen than ever before. True, but the scientific community has also been really interested in repurposing old drugs to treat COVID-19 for a very long time. In fact, just as of this past July, there have been almost 300 different drug compounds being tested in clinical trials for their effectiveness against COVID. Just because there hasn't been a task force organized by the government doesn't mean the problem has been getting a lot of attention from the scientific community. This is misleading. And I want to talk about that we have a solution to this crisis. There is a drug that is proving to be of miraculous impact. And when I say miracle, I do not use that term lightly. And I don't want to be sensationalized when I say that. That is a scientific recommendation based on mountains of data that has emerged in the last three months. It's weird to me that he really insists that he isn't being sensationalist and that he's not here as a politician. He's here as a scientist. And then goes on to say that this is a miracle drug. It's also weird that he claims that there are mountains of evidence. And we'll see in a little bit that that is just not true. Mountains of data have emerged from all from many centers and countries around the world showing the miraculous effectiveness of ivermectin. It basically obliterates transmission of this virus. If you take it, you will not get sick. Let's check the data on that, shall we? And keep in mind that the data I'm talking about in this video is the latest as of today, which is Sunday, December 13th. Currently, there are no published peer-reviewed studies showing that this drug, ivermectin, has any effectiveness in preventing COVID-19. However, there are a few preprint studies that show that there might be an effect here. Now, keep in mind, these papers are not peer-reviewed. That does not make them wrong, but it does mean we should be cautious in interpreting their meaning. So with that in mind, when we read the results of these papers, we can see that even though their sample sizes are small, there does appear to be a decrease in COVID cases in groups that were treated with ivermectin. So right away, two takeaways we can see from these studies is that one, it is not 100% effective. So this doctor saying that if you take ivermectin, you will not get sick is sensationalist, that is misleading, and he should not be saying that. We can also see that there might be an effect here, but we don't know for sure. These results are far from conclusive, and we would have to see much larger studies in order to make any strong conclusions and recommendations based off those results. We just came across a trial last night from Argentina by the lead investigator of Ivan Benton in Argentina, Dr. Hector Carvalho. They prophylaxed 800 healthcare workers. Not one got sick. In the 400 that they didn't prophylax with ivermectin, 58% got sick. 237 of those 400 got sick. If that's true, then great, but also not conclusive. And I can't find this paper published on any preprint server or anywhere, so I can't really comment on it, which 
means that he probably shouldn't be talking about it in front of Congress because, again, it's not peer-reviewed and it's not verified by the scientific community yet. So it's misleading. In early outpatient treatment, we have three randomized control trials and multiple observation as well as case series showing that if you take ivermectin, the need for hospitalization and death will decrease. The most profound evidence we have is in the hospitalized patients. We have four randomized control trials there, multiple observation trials, all showing the same thing. You will not die, or you will die at much, much, much lower rates. Statistically significant, large magnitude results if you take ivermectin. It is proving to be a wonder drug. No, it's not. And the simple reason is that the evidence is much too thin at this point to be making such a huge statement. There are very few published peer-reviewed studies that look at the effectiveness of ivermectin in treating COVID-19 patients. And all of them say that, you know, there might be some small effect here and it might be useful, but we need more studies in order to say whether or not this is definitely true. Not only are the existing studies few in number and low in quality, but another thing that complicates these results is that these patients weren't just receiving ivermectin. They were also receiving other medications alongside it. So it's hard to say how effective ivermectin really is in these cases. At the end of the day, we just need more studies in order to say whether or not it's effective. And we certainly can't say that it's a wonder drug. I mean, don't say that. We, again, stand by our manuscript. It is a scientific manuscript. It's been submitted for peer review. But please recognize, peer review takes time. Well, exactly. Peer review takes time. It's part of the rigorous scientific process that makes sure that the drugs we put into our body are both safe and effective. I mean, look at it this way. Imagine this doctor went in front of Congress and told the public that he had a vaccine that had been tested on 1,500 people across four different studies. But those people in those studies were also taking other vaccines for the same thing. But then you look at the results and you see a small positive benefit. With all of that in hand, does it make sense to go in front of Congress before any of that is peer reviewed and tell the public that you now have a wonder vaccine, that it's a miracle and that everybody should be taking it right now? No, it does not. Especially considering that the real FDA approved COVID vaccine was tested on over 40,000 individuals before being peer-reviewed and then approved. There is a high standard to maintain. Ivermectin does not meet that standard, and we should not deviate from that now. I am not here as a politician or a dramatist or, or sensationalizing what I'm recommending. Except you kind of really are, though. I'm going to be very clear and very simple. All I ask is for the NIH to review our data that we've compiled of all of the emerging data. We have almost 30 studies. Everyone is reliably and reproducibly positive, showing the dramatic impacts of ivermectin. Please, I'm just asking that they review our manuscript. And like we said, that takes time. Submitted manuscripts are being reviewed, and more clinical trials are underway. But he knows that, which is why it's hard for me to believe that he's not here as a dramatist to sensationalize the idea that this medicine might have some effect in treating COVID-19. I can't say why he's doing this, but I can say that it is utterly irresponsible. You know who's dying here? It's, it's our African-American and Latino and elderly. It's some of the most disadvantaged and impoverished members of our society. They are dying at higher rates than anyone else. It's the most, it's, it's, it's the most severe discrepancy I've seen in my medical career. And we are responsible to protect those disadvantaged members. <sighs> okay, so far I haven't actually explained what ivermectin actually is in this video. Ivermectin is a medication meant to treat parasites. You might have given it to your pets before in order to treat worms or mange or other different parasites that can affect your pet. It can also be a treatment for human parasites. Famously, it's used to treat river blindness which is caused by a parasite that's transmitted by black flies. Ivermectin is a fantastically effective medicine in killing the parasite that causes river blindness. So if this goes down like hydroxychloroquine did, where 
its use as a treatment for COVID-19 gets sensationalized and overblown before the science is in, then we could be looking at shortages of ivermectin in communities that really need them. So yes, while it is absolutely true that black, brown, and minority communities are disproportionately being affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, sensationalizing ivermectin is not going to help anybody if we don't know whether or not it's effective. And right now, we absolutely do not know whether or not it's effective. And it's definitely, definitely not a miracle wonder drug. By the way, please do not take ivermectin that is meant for pets. One is meant for your pets, another is meant for humans. They are not interchangeable. Please do not take pet ivermectin. Well, that's going to do it for this week's video. At the end of the day, we don't have a clear answer as to whether or not ivermectin is effective yet, but that's what science is for, so wait for the science. And it's not like we don't have anything while we wait for the science on ivermectin. We have FDA-approved treatments and vaccines for COVID-19, so focus on those. Speaking of science, the links to all the scientific papers that I talked about in this video are linked in the description below so you can look at them for yourself. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch me next Tuesday, where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.